Welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. Today, I'm talking about this thing that's in the background of every video I've published on this channel since March, because soon it's getting some major upgrades, and I wanted to talk about it in its stock form while it's still stock. This is my six, almost six month review of the Creality Ender 3. Bottoms up. Creality gets a lot of flack these days for not updating the Ender 3 in any significant way since it was introduced three years ago, and instead releasing the Ender 3 V2 and the Ender 3 Pro, both of which could have just really superseded this machine entirely. Well, obviously there are some business reasons for why Creality would keep shipping a product that keeps selling. I also think there are some real advantages to having what is essentially a frozen printer design at the entry level of the 3D printing market. That price, and the slim margins it affords, is the reason I feel that Creality hasn't bothered to update the Ender 3. Not even the inexpensive but frustrating things like the weak bed springs or the misaligned hot-end Bowden tube issue. Honestly, the price is as much of a feature of this printer as anything else. Uh, when I bought it in early March, it was at $155, which is cheaper than a lot of 2D printers. That still blows my mind. <laughs> Third-party resellers are still selling it near that price, although Creality's official shop seems to have brought the price back up towards the original $200 MSRP. Of course, you can cross-shop this printer to your heart's content on the current market, but the Ender is actually in stock and shippable where a lot of its more direct competition is not. So that's another thing to think about when considering the price of this printer and how little it's changed over the years. Creality's been really good about maintaining stock on it, and that frozen feature set helps. It means you can actually buy it, even in the worst parts of this pandemic. Since not much has changed, what do you get in 2021? Well, the changes that I've noticed versus the 2018 models I've seen in several YouTube reviews are as follows, and it's a short list. Number one, there's now heated bed power cable support included with the printer. Number two, the all plastic filament guide in the extruder is not present on this printer. Early models seemed to have no brass fitting here, which would mean that over time, as you print, the filament would saw away a groove in the filament guide path, requiring replacement possibly quickly. As you can see, this printer now has a brass insert there, so no worries on that front. Lastly, one of the first things most reviewers recommended you print were little plastic circlips to hold the pneumatic fittings closed, so your Bowden tube ends don't pull out of the fittings. Well, Creality is now including them in the box. Nice. Alright, everything else seems to be the same as the Ender 3s I've seen reviewed across YouTube. This Ender 3 is basically stock, although I do have some mods hanging off of it in various places, printed in a certain grey PLA. I'll talk about the mods in a second, but I want to mention this filament really quickly. This is Polymaker's Polyterra PLA in fossil grey. I chose grey for my first spool of filament because I specifically wanted something that wouldn't hide print imperfections as I dialed in my new printer, as black and white so often can. This PLA has proven to be much more capable than simply a diagnostic filament, and I've had good success with pretty much everything I printed with it, including a shim that holds a visa mount on my recording stand. 20% infill and no stability problems. It's been holding for several months. Definitely makes a good starting filament. Well done, Polymaker. Anyway, the mods I've printed for this printer are as follows.
wouldn't call any of these mods essential. Maybe with the exception of the motherboard intake fan filter. That keeps filament bits from getting jammed in the motherboard cooling fan, which keeps the stepper drivers from overheating and frying. I'd say a close number two would be these filament path mods here. The filament path on the Ender 3 is normally quite square, with filament dropping straight down off the spool and taking a 90 degree right angle into the extruder. These two mods unwind that filament path a bit and give it a gentler curve. The Ender 3 already struggles with under extrusion, and installing these mods will help with that noticeably. The rest of the mods are nice to haves, like the power supply fan silencer, the top bar tool holder, and X axis GoPro holder. There are a ton of Ender 3 sound dampening feet mods, but the, I chose these square ones because they're designed to use packing foam included with the printer as the damping material. I thought that was a really clever reuse of material that would otherwise just be thrown away. Trouble is, if you've ever tried to use this particular packing foam for anything, you know that it squishes down into practically nothing in just a few weeks. So it wasn't long before my printer was back to standing directly on the desktop, transmitting all of its vibrations into the desk's surface. What I ended up doing to fix this was layering several slices of clear double-sided tape inside the feet and then capping them off with what remained of the foam feet. That's been holding its shape for about a month now without issue, and does a pretty good job isolating the printer from the desk. This desk itself isn't long for this world, though, and I'll be replacing it soon with something, something homemade that will be much more sturdy and more versatile. I'll cover that in the upgrades section at the end of the video. So, how's it been to live with? How's the print quality, the speed, the noise, running costs? Let's break it down. Pros and cons. Let's start with the bad stuff first, because this printer is far from perfect. It's good, and it's really good for the price, but it's not perfect. Okay, the first thing I want to address is this. This printer is noisy. Folks who hide their 3D printers away in closets far away from where they're working, or filming, or sleeping, have the right idea. The noise cancellation mods I've made to this printer have transformed it from what it used to be, yes, but it is still too loud to print with overnight without disrupting my sleep even when I'm sleeping in the next room with the door closed. I want to be very clear with this. If you're looking at this printer and thinking, oh, I can print a couple of mods to make it silent. No, you can't. You can make it quiet-er, but it will never be a quiet printer without a silent stepper driver upgrade. And with the cost of those, you may as well start with a different printer that already has them. If you want to know whether I regret anything about buying this printer, this is the thing. It's noisy enough that if I could go back and do it again, I'd get either a V2 or a Pro with the silent stepper motherboards. I will definitely be upgrading the board on this in the future to get those silent stepper drivers. It's that big of an issue. Okay, that's the biggest bummer on the printer, but number two is real close second, and that is bed leveling. The Ender 3 is notorious for having a difficult to level bed, and my experience with it was no different. Leveling the bed on this printer is a bit of a nightmare. For me specifically, this printer's front left adjuster screw will just unscrew itself, seemingly at random. I expect to have to re-level the bed after a week or two of not printing, but twice now this screw in particular has unscrewed itself while the printer was printing. Thankfully, when it does unscrew, it raises the bed up, so neither of these times did it break the print in progress, but my next print pretty much immediately ground the nozzle into the bed on the prime line. The fix for this is to buy stiffer bed leveling springs for the printer, which will both hold the bed and the adjustment springs in place with more force, preventing slippage. I will talk about that more in the upgrades section at the end, because that's part of the upgrades I have planned. Okay. With the bad stuff out of the way, let's get into what I really liked about this printer. First, print quality. It's been really good. Aesthetically, it's fine, on par with similar Cartesian bed slingers like it. Dimensional accuracy is pretty darn good, even when printing at relatively high speeds. It is absolutely perfect for a home user like me, and the few, the few issues that I have had with dimensional accuracy can definitely be tuned away with slicer settings like extrusion width and Z-steps tuning. I mentioned this at the start of the video, but the Ender 3 being as popular as it is, is a feature in its own right. There are so many prints tailored to this printer specifically that it's practically its own platform at this point. This is helped by it being completely open source, right down to the mainboard firmware. Many large 3D printing projects out there, like the 3D Print Colorizer, which was featured by Teaching Tech in one of his recent videos, have large portions of their projects basically tailored to the Ender 3. 
For example, with printable mounting hardware specific to this printer, because it's so popular. This holds true for projects like the Ender Extender and multiple direct drive upgrades that are tailored for the Ender 3 specifically as well. Okay, pros and cons done. It's pro tip time for anyone else who has an Ender 3 with a glass bed and hates leveling it. After spending way too much time messing around with this printer and a piece of paper and the bed leveling screws and just repeatedly failing to get the bed to level and my first layer to stick, here's the method I developed to level this print bed and nail the first layer every time. This is based on teaching text and bed level fine tuning techniques and works like a charm. Step one, actually step zero, preheat the printer. Everything we're about to adjust expands when it warms up, and this technique also requires the printer to be printing to fine tune, so you may as well warm it up now. Anyway, step one is to select a model to calibrate the bed with, preferably something that will print fairly quickly, but still take up a meaningful amount of the bed space, so not a calibration cube or a benchy. Uh, you can try a bed leveling print from CHEP or Teaching Tech, but that is hard mode. I suggest trying a coaster like this cool Spirograph coaster from Make-A-Lot on Thingiverse. Load the coaster up in your slicer and set your settings the way you like them. Then enable a skirt, which you may already have enabled, but, and this is the important part, double the number of skirt lines your slicer defaults to. In this case, that means I set it to 6. Okay, slice the model and save it to your SD card. Now head over to your printer. Now the fun part. On the printer itself, using the Move Axis menu, Move the Z-axis up 10 millimeters, your Y out 40, and your Z or your X over 30. That should position the printer's nozzle basically directly over the front left bed leveling screw. Go back to the Z-axis menu and using the 1 millimeter increments, slowly bring the nozzle down to the bed surface. At 0 millimeters, it should touch the bed. That's kind of the point of 0 millimeters. If it's not touching the bed, adjust the bed upwards until it just touches it. It's okay to eyeball it at this point, we'll fine tune it in a second. Now, with the printer preheated, it's probably oozing filament out of the hot end, making it a little harder to tell if the nozzle is only just touching the surface. That's okay. It's not the end of the world if it's actually slightly above the glass surface at zero millimeters. It's more important that it's not crashing into the bed. You can tell this, filament ooze or not, by watching the build plate when you bring the z-axis down to zero millimeters. Does the bed move? It shouldn't. If it does, adjust your bed downwards until it doesn't touch the bed. Repeat this for the other three corners. Bring your z-axis up, x and y over, z down by one until you touch the bed. When you're done, come back to the front left corner and check that one again. It's probably going to be off at zero millimeters. Adjust it just like before, optionally adding glue stick to your print bed if you like to use it, and start your print. If your slicer is configured to print one, keep an eye on the prime line in case there's any trouble and get ready to adjust your bed leveling screws, because that part's coming up real quick. Once the skirt starts printing, watch the quality of the line that's being extruded onto the print bed. You don't want that line to be round or sausage-shaped. A good first layer line should look a little bit squished, but not so much that the material becomes thin and the color of the print bed starts to show through it. If you set your slicer correctly, you've got six skirt lines to get this plastic looking good. Go to it. Start adjusting those knobs. This method has been foolproof for me for the last few months. If I can get the skirt lines looking good before it finishes printing the skirt, my first layer is pretty much guaranteed to stick without issue. Pro tip number two. If you're struggling with stringing and blobbing on your Ender 3, try increasing your retraction distance and speed. I have these set to 6.5mm and 50mm per second respectively, and that's basically solved all my stringing problems. Pro tip number three. This also comes from Teaching Tech. Go subscribe to his channel already if you haven't. Uh, flip the Bowden tube around as soon as you get your printer. Pull the whole Bowden tube out. Make a clean, fresh, perpendicular cut on the extruder end of the tube and shove that clean end all the way down into the hot end side instead. And make absolutely sure there's no gap between the nozzle and the Bowden end. That's a really clever way to basically solve the misaligned Bowden tube issue on this printer for zero dollars. So far, this has worked great. I've had no jams. Knock on wood. I'm not actually sure that's wood. So for the last part of this video, let's talk about the future of this printer and me. I'm keeping this printer, for now at least. 
Yeah, I'm not happy with the noise of it, but the silent stepper driver upgrade has come down in price since I bought this printer originally, and is now only about 30 bucks, so that will definitely happen at some point. That's not the only upgrade I have planned for it, though. I have plans to improve print speed and quality, convenience, and expand the printer's capabilities. Let's talk about that last point first. That 3D print colorizer I mentioned earlier is the first upgrade I'm putting on this machine. I've always wanted to experiment with color 3D printing, and this is basically a $15 solution, the cost of the pack of markers itself. I've got to at least try it. I'm super curious. 3D printed upgrades aside, I'm also looking at some real money hardware upgrades for the machine. First on the list is definitely a Raspberry Pi. When most folks think of adding a Pi to their 3D printer, they think Octoprint, but I'm planning on converting this printer to Clipper and Mainsail. Octoprint is great and has oodles of plugins available, but all I've ever really wanted for my printer is a web interface for my local network and time-lapse support. Now that Mainsail has a time-lapse component available, I can explore Clipper's extremely interesting input shaping and high-speed printing features, while also creating ultra-satisfying printing b-roll. I'm excited. I'll be creating that printing b-roll with the next bit of hardware, a Raspberry Pi high-quality camera and a C-mount lens. While I know it's possible to trigger external cameras, including DSLRs with G-code, and I have an external DSLR available in the form of my EOS M here, it's a bit large, and it's going to have to wait until after the desk upgrade. That's the next thing. The desk I have this printer on is awful. Uh, I ordered it when I bought the printer, early in 2021, when lumber prices were absolutely outrageous. This whole desk cost less than one piece of 4x8 plywood at the time. But it needs to go. It wobbles and shimmies like it has something to prove on the dance floor. I'm sure I'm just a few prints away from it collapsing altogether. I'll be replacing it with something homemade, but that means I'm going to need a couple more tools before I can build what I want. Um, my plans for the desk are to raise the printer up a bit from where it is now, and add a secondary shelf underneath it where I can hold a filament dry box so I can store and change out filaments much more easily. I've already mentioned the motherboard upgrade. That'll probably happen sooner rather than later, since I'm really not happy with how noisy this printer is. Oh, and last but definitely not least, uh, the upgrade I'm probably going to install first, even before the 3D print colorizer, is this official BL Touch automatic bed leveling kit from Creality. This kit includes a fresh Bowden tube from Capricorn in stylish dark blue, the much-recommended stiffer yellow bed springs I mentioned earlier, a few replacement high-quality pneumatic fittings for your new Bowden tube, and of course, the BL Touch itself, which is a genuine ant clabs unit and includes a metal mounting bracket and USB firmware flasher for the Ender 3 V1 motherboard. This kit basically solves all of the initial little problems with the Ender 3, bed leveling, keeping the bed level, Bowden tube issues, and depending on what firmware you flash onto it, you can eliminate the, the blobbing in vase mode issues as well. Now sure, this kit costs 50 bucks, so you're now at the price level of an Ender 3 V2 or a generic Prusa clone, but uh, or an FL Sun Q5, but I think the Ender is still pretty competitive here, especially since you've eliminated a lot of the major problems about the printer and added auto bed leveling. So, with all that said, and it was a lot to say, do I recommend this printer in 2021? Yes, asterisk. If you want a 3D printer to tinker with, to expand and build upon, to learn about how they work and how you can improve them and your prints, yes. A thousand percent yes. The only hesitation I'd have recommending this particular printer to a tinkerer is if you're looking to print high temperature or noxious filaments since those call for an enclosure and enclosing a moving bed Cartesian printer like this one is pretty space inefficient. If you want an enclosed printer, I'd look at a Core XY or a Delta printer, as they're both much more desk space efficient. That is assuming you want to tinker with your 3D printer at all. If what you really want to do is print stuff, and especially if what you want to do is design and prototype things, this printer can get you there eventually, but I think it's going to be a much more hands-on process than you might want to deal with. If you're designing and printing and iterating and testing and redesigning and reprinting a physical object prototype, the last thing you want to do is to have to troubleshoot your printer. It's extremely frustrating. 
If you're in this camp, I strongly recommend looking at something more turnkey, like the FL Sun Deltas, or the Prusa printers, or clones, that include out-of-the-box automatic bed leveling and other convenience features like Wi-Fi support. For me personally, I'm on the fence about it. On the one hand, the first month or so with this printer was so frustrating that I contemplated returning it or selling it and getting something else. On the other hand, once I overcame the initial obstacles, I found this printer to be extremely capable and useful. The honeymoon period was definitely short-lived, but I have since really grown to appreciate it. <sighs> hmm. Yeah. I think I've said everything I want to say about this printer in its current form. I've kept it stock for too long. It's time to get some upgrades into this thing, and I will see you in the next couple of videos for those. I hope you found my little review of the Ender 3 useful, hopefully even enjoyable. If this video was helpful for you, please do hit that like button. It helps bubble the video up to others who might be interested in it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, especially if you made it this far, and have a good night.